A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hey, Homeworthy. Um, I'm Scott. Welcome to our place in East Harlem. Come on in. Hey y'all, I am Scott Meachin Wood. I'm an interior designer based here in Manhattan. And I'm also a textile and wallpaper designer. And welcome to our little place in East Harlem. The apartment itself is um, pre-war, I think it's 1923, if I've got my numbers correct. I did a little bit of research before we moved in. And it's technically a three bedroom that we cobbled two of the bedrooms for closets for me and my partner Drew, because we have lots of clothes. So this is the the entryway, entry hall, only because it's a hall, to our house. Um, it's one of those spaces that was already kind of dark and gloomy to start with. So we painted it really dark to kind of accentuate that. We hung the lights really low so you feel a little condensed. So I'm kind of a master at gallery walls. Um, I worked for Ralph Lauren for 14 years doing their in their creative department. And that was one of my, we all had like our little tasks and gallery walls was one of mine. So I love doing them, they're fun. Um, this is an old Slim Aaron's piece. Um, this is a great Annie Leibovitz image of the fence I used to fence. So I have a couple fencing images. Um, my favorite thing in the, in the entryway though is this, this is my mom. And she used to hang um, over the fireplace in our house in Mississippi. I love that I can see her from the most, almost everywhere in the house. So from this very tight, condensed, dark space, we're going to head into the living room where it gets much more expansive. So this is our living room, which is where we spend the lion's share of our time here in the house in. We moved in on April the 1st, 2020. So if you remember the, if you remember the New York lockdown, we were like seven days later. So the good news was we parked a 26 foot truck in the middle of our, in the middle of the street and outside. No one honked, no one blew, no one cared. We were there for like 10 hours unloading the truck. Um, and then we just kind of slowly, because we couldn't go anywhere, just started unpacking and kind of creating our little home here. I love this room. This actually is one of our own sofas. This is our Inverness sofa covered in one of my, one of my tartans. This is Meacham tartan that I designed and loved and named after me. <laughs> this is, for being super fussy, it's super functional. Like it's where we sit, it's where we watch TV, it's where we do our work. That's kind of Drew's side of the table, this is mine. So this house, not to be vulgar, it's kind of like a grinder date. I saw it for the first time the day the truck got here. So I'm doing like, like mover triage in a space that I had really actually never seen before. So I'm like, well, that's gonna go there, that's gonna go there. Let's put this here. This sofa was supposed to go in there, but it wouldn't fit through the door. So the other sofa went in there. It was it was a little manic, but it was a fun test of my space planning skills to do it kind of live with, you know, six people following me around. We also are huge book collectors. So I found this piece. It was my Christmas present to myself a couple of years ago. I found it at an at an antique dealer in Florida, I think, and had it shipped out to San Francisco. It comes in pieces, thank God. When I was packing this in San Francisco, each each box was marked left bookcase, top shelf, right left bookcase, third shelf. And so I could just take the boxes and put everything back where it goes. And so I knew where all the books were, <laughs> even though we had just moved. And it made moving um, a, great deal, a great deal simpler. Tell me what's above the bookshelf. Oh. The owls. We have lots of owls. They are from a company. They're from a company that you know called Abercrombie and Fitch, which has nothing to do with the naked sex frenzy that it turned into. This was two, three incarnations before that, when they were the world's greatest sporting outfitter in New York, and they started making these owls. They're all kind of English professions and English sporting goods. But what I love about them is. X-rays, like owl x-rays in this little binder. Like it's just the, the amount of detail. The golf clubs work, the hats all come off. They're super charming and we have a lot of them. <laughs> so one of my big hauls from Ralph Lauren was this painting. Now she was in a Madison Avenue, oddly, close to where we live. 
um, store as a backdrop in a theatrical window in the 1980s. I love her. She's been all over the world with me. She used to hang in my shop. She used to hang in the house. She, of course, we brought her here and we, and she kind of moved around. She's not, she's a tough move. She's a tough hang because she's big. Um, but I love her and she's, it's based on a, I'm going to have a brain fart, George Stubbs portrait that hangs in the National Gallery in London. I wanted these two rooms to play together really nicely. This room is kind of blue with some yellow accents. That room's yellow with some blue accents. So they kind of marry each other nicely, but still live independently. It's a really simple color palette. Um, I mean, navy and white is a classic always and adding the yellow in and certainly adding some of the tartan in made it feel a little bit more, a little bit more modern maybe. So let's head into the bedroom. Again, a very yellow room. This was part of our, this is my COVID lockdown room because I upholstered these walls myself over the course of like two months. Um, all the nail head trim, all the ribbon trim. I needed a project. I needed something to do. So I'm like, let's, up let's upholster the walls. That'll take me a couple months to do. And then we just started layering in. We have tons of antiques. Um, that's one of our headboards. That's um, ancient Campbell tartan. This actually, and I love this. This is one of my um, great grandmother, great grandmother Woods quilts that moves around the house every once in a while. I think I learned from my dad to like, get up in the morning, make your bed. At least by the time you've had breakfast, you've got something that's checked off for the day. So it's a good way to start your day. So I always make the bed first thing in the morning. Um, and it just makes, A, it makes getting into bed more of a, more of a ceremony, um, which is lovely. And it's just, since you can see this room from the entire rest of the apartment, having a dirty bed means the, means the living room's a mess. It means that the library's a mess. So it kind of helps establish um, a point of view for the apartment. So the contents of this entire apartment are somewhat hilarious because they are the items that were in our old apartment in San Francisco, plus Drew's old apartment that he had to move out of when the building sold that has been in storage for four, three or four years. And then all the contents of my old studio in San Francisco. So we took a one bedroom and another one bedroom and an office and put everything in here. <laughs> so some of this is items from the office. That's the office. This was the house. That was the house. This is an old, um, was an old shoe fixture from Ralph Lauren from a million years ago that we got rid of. So I, was lucky enough to buy it. That's Drew's old chair. That's my old headboard. So it just, just kind of had to make it work. It's kind of an aggressively blue gingham space. Not that we're all that kind of hoedown-ish, but it just kind of happened that way. And I was gonna do the lampshade in blue gingham. I'm like, no, let's be more interesting than that. So I found this purple gingham and just kind of cobbled it together. I'll, I will tell you that I did that with like a staple gun and just like, and some anger and just got it done. It's amazing what a staple gun and some anger will get you in your house. Up above the bookshelf, that's another Abercrombie piece. They were from a company in Italy. The Abercrombie carried, they were known for them back in the 1930s and 40s. So that's our giant, that's our giant um, rhinoceros. Um, and he always kind of lords over us and protects us in the night to make sure that we're safe. Those are Drew's hats, which he loves, and he wears one almost every day. And I was gonna move them for the shoot. I'm like, no, no, they live here. They're part of they're part of what we do. So um, just, we're just gonna leave them here. So besides shoes and books and sweaters, I also collect antique Victorian tartanware, mainly dating from the mid 1800s or 1860, when Victoria and Prince Albert bought Balmoral in the 1800s as one of their rural residences. Nobody went to Scotland. It was just the backwoods of Britain. So when they bought it, it became very vogue and very chic to have memorabilia from Scotland in your London home. That means that you were connected to the royal family. So they started making this and it's just the craziest stuff. Um, I love this is like, just like a little piggy bank. That I've had forever. This is great. This clearly is from a shop in London and this is all of their silk tartan collection. 
So let's head into um, our library, which is comically referred to amongst us as the sleeping porch. Because when it gets in the midsummer, when it gets too hot to sleep together, someone will bail into the other room. So this is dark in here. It's dark and quiet. More books. <laughs> All of Drew's opera scores. My opera scores are in the other closet. Another little leather animal. This is this is Basil. Drew named him. He got him while I was I think he got him while I was when I was away. He's like, by the way, there's an, there's a new animal in the house. I'm like, oh god, because I was like, is it another giant one? What are we gonna do? Where are we gonna put it? He's like, no, it's a little baby. I'm like, fine, it can live in here. Living here with the rest of the owls. With the rest of the owls. These are the, these are kind of the sporting owls. <laughs> the kind of the huntsman owls. It was always going to be green. I didn't quite know that it was going to be this green, and it is very green in here. We have lots of blankets. This is my this is my old San Francisco mentality, where it was always 65 degrees and foggy. So there were blankets in every room, on every sofa, on every chair, because we needed one to wrap up with at night. They're a little less needed here, especially in the midst of a hot New York summer. So they always get kind of moved around. And so a great tip if you're not in love with your sofa, though I do love the sofa. It is super comfortable. Um, but draping a, um, a blanket over it is kind of an easy, kind of quick and dirty slip cover. If it doesn't get a lot of, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't have like your seven year old children in here rolling around on it because it's not going to stay that neat. But for a sofa that we don't use all the time, it just kind of helps just give the room a different point of view. So we're back in the hallway and now let's go to where all the magic happens, which is our little tiny kitchen, which is either twice as big as it needs to be, or half the size that it needs to be. I can't decide which one I'd rather do. If we owned the place, this would have gotten just beaten down to the walls immediately. I love a gallery wall. <laughs> and we had tons of these. So most things, most collections will work better if you hang them together as a thing. So this is all of our antique kind of team portraiture from England from the probably early 1900s, um, plus some modern pieces as well. This is vintage Brunswick fabric that I've had forever. Just on a, it's an old fabric wing from a showroom. And um, there's a washer dryer behind this. You lucky duck. I, I'm like, we have a vegetable sprayer and a dishwasher and a washer dryer. Done. I never have to leave the house again. Um, and I kind of don't. Um, but that's a great trick. Just because it, because it, it's, it is unattractive in every sense of the word. And last but not least, in our parade of blue and white that lives in the house, is the loo, which is here. It's the tiniest bathroom on the face of the earth. You can basically stand in the middle of it and touch all four walls from one spot. So it's the weeest thing ever with the gallery wall, because duh, I live here. And this is one of our wallpapers. Um, this is Cordelia Park wall. So we um, did the door with her just to give it a little more, a little more umph. This is our little garden stool. Um, keeps the keeps the time. Um, the, the, at this point, the battery on that little clock is dead, so I set it for 4 p.m. So it's always tea time. Makes my life easier. We have tons of blue and white in the house, and it just all kind of nothing. Like I should put everything on wheels because it just all moves around. The big furniture stays. The little accessories are just on skates every night, and just will land wherever they land. As a southerner, home is a place of welcome. It's a place to greet visitors, to have friends over, um, cocktail parties, and watching TV. Um, as a kind of newly formed New Yorker, it's a refuge. So it kind of lives in both of those spaces. Um, I love having people over, and we have done that on a couple of occasions. We're not quite built for it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a roomy apartment, but it's very roomy for two people. It gets a little a little tight with four people or six people. I'm sure we could do like 20 and we'd be fine. Because <laughs> then no one's looking for a space to sit down. I like having people over, but I also think of it as just a place to close the door and take my shoes off and, and kind of hide. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe. Before you go, I want to tell you a little bit more about today's sponsor, Squarespace. They are the ultimate platform for beautiful website design, and I know how much Homeworthy viewers care about design. The templates are amazing. They have tons of stylish fonts and backgrounds. I also love that Squarespace offers unique tools for creating members-only content and email communications. 
plus analytic tools to help grow a loyal audience. And they have powerful e-commerce capabilities that can help you manage inventory and promote your products. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com homeworthy for 10% off your first domain or website.